All right. Ladies and gents, welcome. We've got some uh, Mediterranean action, not to be confused with Baltic. Basically, Mediterranean, you've got some big old water in the middle. This is a pretty sizable lake. And you can use that to fish. You can use that to sail across if you wish. We'll see if that happens here at lower elo. We've got uh, 780 elo here. Jamart uh, playing as the Ethiopians. And then in the blue, we have Grimmit. And Grimmit is playing as the Slavs. Now, we saw Slavs on this map uh, earlier on in the day. And for people on YouTube, probably like last week-ish. I don't know exactly what our upload schedule is going to look like. Uh, the Slavs, they uh, they had some problems with the castle drop. I don't think we'll see a castle drop on this map. We could still see it, but it's just a further distance to get to the other side. So I imagine this is going to be more about late game control. And if it goes late game, I'm really excited to see both these civilizations. Now, again, I talk about it every single time. There's water. If you're looking to have the most success, you absolutely should be thinking of docking. And if you're not too sure on how that all works... You want to start off with villagers on food, like both players are doing. Go to your lumber camp, like Red is doing now. Get four villagers on wood. And instead of making a mill soon after that, you just make the dock and make fishing ships with excess wood. That's, generally speaking, what you should aim to do. You see, we put a lot of focus on creating villagers in a game. And there's even stats for it on our screen. Idle TC time, okay? That's economy production. You can only produce economy at the rate your TC can produce if it's only land. But if there's water, you can produce economy out of the TC while simultaneously produce economy out of the dock. So you could double the production of eco, basically. And that's why it becomes important. Now, there is going to be one person out there that's like, Yeah, but actually, T90, when I, when I try and dock, I forget to produce out of my TC more. So even though I have fishing ships, I have fewer villagers, so it's pretty much the same. And to anyone who would think that, yeah, you might be right, but it's good to practice. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, I have to rewind because I know exactly what happened. <laughs> God, I love Loilo so much. Oh, wait, never mind. I don't know exactly what happened. Okay, so Blue, I guess just happened to make the starting house here. And then tried to send this villager to one of these trees. But the villagers can't get to those trees. So the villager is now wandering the whole way around the wood line. And yeah, Blue kind of lamed half the wood line here. Oh, no. All right. And I think Blue has now realized this. And now Blue has forgotten some sheep underneath the TC. And now Blue's going to make a house. And yeah, okay, this game is hard. We're going to see how things flow here for these two as they're working their way towards an eventual attack, possibly. But as we're waiting, we were talking about old technology. Uh, not like old, old technology, right? Got some people here yelling at me for saying MP3 players are old because it's making them feel old. But I was talking about how uh, the year the first iPod came out and how I really wanted it. And I didn't get it, and I ended up going for an MP3 player, and basically how I feel really bad that I was, like, upset. Because, you know, kids are stupid and self-centered, and I didn't realize, like, you know, mom and dad couldn't, you know, get me an iPod, and they would have if they could have. Anyways, on that topic, though, I do remember how, uh, you know, groundbreaking it was before that, when I went from a normal CD player to a non-skip handheld portable CD player. Oh, yeah. I burned me some crazy CDs on my brother's computer, too. Woof! Had some Nickelback. We had some Fuel. What else was on there? Actually, if you've never heard of the group Fuel, I don't know what genre you guys are into. Fuel is kind of an underrated group. They don't have the craziest albums ever, but it's actually a great uh, artist to, to listen to. Um, I guess you could say that was like grunge. But yeah, my music taste that I have today... Um, granted, it's progressed from that, but a lot of that is based on the early CDs I burned from my brother's PC. Yeah, I don't know if my CD player had, had bass boost, actually. <laughs> but I remember it would still skip on the bus, you know? But it didn't skip as much, and it was like, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, God, the town bell's been rung. Okay. <laughs> 
Blue's economy has been a mess. You've got villagers uh, having to chop around the house. You got the town bell. But we do have a dock now, which is really nice. And the most important thing is, is that Blue still has kept consistent build production. Also, Blue and Red have found a lot of extra goats out here. I forgot there's extra on the map. Blue hasn't actually sent these home yet. If you would have told me when I was a kid back in the 60s and 70s that we'd have more than one TV and machines, you could play games on the TV, I'd laugh at you. Tech changed so much since then, right? Well, I mean, we consider it wild within the sphere of gaming that we right now are watching a, what, a 23, 24-year-old game, right? Yeah, technology's been crazy. I, you know, funny story, actually, uh, along the lines of, like, pro progression of technology. And yes, I am coming off. We're all coming off as like very old people like, oh, back in my day, we didn't even have hotkey, you know. Um, but if you guys remember AIM, so AOL Instant Messenger. So, uh, so for full perspective, my one of my best friends uh, was my neighbor growing up. And he's still my best friend to this day. Brother for life. And we went to the same school. Our families went to the same church. We're literally right across the field from each other. So you can imagine, like, yeah, we were close and we hung out all the time. Great job from Blue to Fish. I'm so proud of Blue. But while we, you know, were basically brothers, that led to a lot of fights because we saw too much of each other, right? And so it got to a point, as Red is going to steal some extra goats here, that we would get in fights over the dumbest stuff. Not to mention we're kids. And kids already get in fights over dumbest, the dumbest things. So, um, he had three brothers. And I had two older siblings, but there's such an age gap that they were already out of the house when AOL Instant Messengers... Uh, sorry, AOL Instant Messenger was the thing. And so you know how back then it would be like, so-and-so has been online for three hours. Or so-and-so has been online for such and such days so it was right after dial-up when we got like dsl or whatever and so you know you could stay online or whatever without it being like an issue and he used to get so jealous of me because my online time was longer than him because his brothers would sign out to get on their account so he could never be like you know, T90 official was online for like three days. He That was like genuinely a thing that we argued and, and I picked on him about. <laughs> like, what a world. <laughs> you were on the internet longer and it showed how long you were on the internet. I would want the opposite now, right? I would want the opposite. I, I would not want people to know how, online, how long I was spending on the internet or something. Uh... Anyways, it's a chill game here. Uh, Red found quite a few goats, as I'm sure you noticed. Uh, Blue is fishing with three fishing ships right now. So total resources collected is ahead. So uh, Red has had a lot of food focus on land with all the goats. Do you remember Facebook Poke Wars? I do remember that, yep. I wonder how many people remember Zanga. God, I would pay so much money to get access to my old Zanga profiles if I could even remember the username. So you guys probably, obviously y'all know Facebook, y'all know MySpace, I'm sure. But I think in between there, there was Zanga. It was X-A-N-G-A. -A and Zanga was like a blog style. And uh, you could have, like, different themes for your profiles. And uh, so when I mean theme, like, if you were, uh, you know, like a sports fan of a certain team, you could have that team's theme. Uh, quick wall! Quick wall! Quick wall! Oh, okay. But there is a hole there, Blue, so you might want to plug that gap. Uh, and you could have songs play when you go to your profile and things like that. Anyways, dude, I had... All right, guys, this is a story I've never told you guys before. Again, just talking about old embarrassing memories when it comes to, like, growing up in the internet age. So, as Blue's fishing away, which is awesome, I had a Zanga 
profile, okay? And I was pretty short until I was like 16. So I went from like, to give you full perspective, when I was 16, I think I was like five foot nine. And then by the time I was 19, I was six foot two. And Red's gonna steal more goats, you greedy goat boy. Okay. Um, so anyways, I, I don't, I, when I was like 12 or 13, I was, I was even shorter, obviously. Uh, and I was pretty self-conscious about that, but I wanted to look cool in my profile. So my, my buddy, my neighbor, he had a basketball hoop and you could lower the basketball hoop to different heights. Uh, and so, you know, we lowered it to like the lowest height, but I was still so short, I couldn't even get close to dunking. So, um, <laughs> we had a bike ramp <laughs> and it was pretty big. And so I got the bike ramp and I sit, I sat the bike ramp in front of the basketball hoop and then I would get up on my tippy toes and I would like wanted to act like I was in the act of dunking right next to the rim. And then I made my friend take a picture of me dunking. And then I posted it on my profile as my profile pic because I wanted to look cool. We had to lower the hoop, okay? And then I needed a ramp. And as all the people who are like 5'9 are getting offended right now listening, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> and then I had to get up on my tippy toes and hold there. <laughs> and then he took photos. <laughs> yup, that happened, man. That happened, so. Anyways, we have, we've told a lot of stories in this cast, but I mean, there hasn't really been a lot of aggression. But look at Blue. Like, Blue's been fishing like crazy. And if Red didn't have the goats, this game might even be over by now. Thankfully, Red has found all the goats on Earth before the farms. Seriously, what is this poor mouth story about being short? LMAO. Hey, Troy, listen, I didn't mean to strike a nerve. All right? The whole point was, is that I was shorter than I am now, okay? I didn't say 5'9 was short. Now, you know, if you're going to get testy with me, we could look up height averages. And we could go that direction. I don't even know the data on this whatsoever. I'm just trying to make jokes. Okay. I, the, the point was, is it's embarrassing the steps that I went through to set up my Zanga profile. That's all. What's blue scouting look like here? Interesting base layouts from both players. That looks like an auto scout to me. Let's see. I tried to click it. Yeah, that's, an, that's a very thorough job there from blue. And blue has walled this and had made spearmen to protect said waller. Is over chopping on this side. But I mean, it's going to be in Castle Age and has had 12 fishing ships bringing in resources all the time. They've been bringing in food 70% of the time. And you can see just the resources they have being held right now, right here. It's insane. And you don't really have to focus on it either. Resources collected, even though the eco count's pretty close. 2,000 more here for Grimmett. Hmm. I filled my MySpace and Zanga with tool everything. Oh, you were a tool fan. Okay. Oh, God. Here comes Red with the army. Oh, this is so amazing. Oh, my God. Red just clicked over here, guys, and it's walled. So the pathing is going to take Red to the other side of the map. Will Red ever notice this? Yep, Red just noticed. <laughs> Look, Red was like, wait, what? And tried it again. And so there they go. They're headed to the other side now. Nope. <laughs> I love how obvious it was to realize what problem Red is having. So yeah, basically the reason they're not doing it now is because Red clicked somewhere over here. But every time Red would click here, they path the other way. Okay. So we know, we, we now have learned the importance of a fish boom. And Blue is now even going to dominate water with the fire galleys, which is also really smart. The war galley upgrade too? Man, Blue's a beast. Oh my god, Red keeps going back. <laughs> Red needs to see the walls and attack them, I guess, right? There you go. Now you can attack the wall. Okay. 
Let's see how blue deals with this. Mm, there's a... Oh my goodness, that is a low elo town center if I've ever seen one on the stone and the gold. Not a bad TC, by the way. I say low elo TC because a lot of low elo players appreciate this stuff, but that's not bad. And so this is just low elo legends for you, right? Like blue has done so much right in this game, but now has a feudal age army attacking here and is thinking let's tower it. But I don't think blue has judged the situation correctly. I actually could be wrong. It's actually going to be closer than I thought. But that tower could so easily be denied here, assuming red is looking at this. And... Well, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. And red's going to... Run past it? Just passing, bro. Just passing. <laughs> this is such a satisfying game. All right, now Red's in Castlage. He's got an army behind enemy lines. Panic time for Blue. Blue's like, well, crap. I thought the tower was going to be good enough. Apparently not. Now, Skirmishers is obviously a good unit against Archer units. Um, I will say that if you want a get out of jail quick... Go to here, uh, just a siege workshop with a bunch of mangonels and scorpions is also really good. Red looking to scout all this. Obviously, blue is aware that it's happening. But blue doesn't seem to know where it is. And, oh boy. Okay, now blue's reacted. The crossbow army's in. Painful times for blue's economy. The total idle time for blue's economy is going to get so high here. We've got knights, we've got pikemen, we've got skirmishers from blue, but the pressure is absolutely on right now. And assuming red can keep this army alive, red can do a lot of great things behind this. Great work from red. Blue is dropping a town center here, which is very interesting. So it's tried to wall this side. Would love to see a new house here. But it's now dropping a town center there. And I think blue is actually sending a counterattack across the map, which is very smart. And yet again, you know, the fishing ships have continued to fish here for blue. It's getting slightly less efficient, but still pretty effective. And red just goes to the corner to hide. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? Like, I think red can't have that balance of, of macro and micro. So red says, let's put that army there for later and let's do other things at home. And boom. Gonna drop the monastery. Boom. Gonna drop the town center. So, you know, Red tried to find a little balance over it all, but just had to run away for a second. Now it's gonna attack that house. Blue going to send the knights towards Red's economy. Red, just like Blue, had gone for a nice house wall, though it's not a full wall. Oh my goodness. That oh, They almost went right to that TC. And the crossbows now saw this. So some of the crossbows went home, or were they new crossbows? I think they were new crossbows. And blue reacted there, too. Very fast reaction. And now the fire ships hit, and I think red won't react to this. Blue, great job this game. Those knights, I love it. Like, just a couple knight counterattack after they hit you is so nice. And you can see red's got so many different things to look at. There's the garrison now. Also, red might be looking over here, or maybe red's not looking over there now because blue is raiding. And even if the knights die now, you've just completely shifted your opponent's focus elsewhere. This is kind of funny, by the way. Some of the crossbows are chasing that ship. Um, but all right. Again, the idle TC time is lower for red. However, red has been behind an eco, all due to those fishing ships. And now you shift more into the other aspects of the eco, and that's where it gets tricky, because blue isn't exactly doing that. But blue's producing villagers there. Blue's on three TCs. Tons of gold. Tons of gold. And red is not happy about the potential of night raids, and red is just going to wall this up now. I'm really happy with this game. I think Red completely forgot about these docks. 
I'm also very curious on certain stats of Red's villagers. Like these three villagers. Let's see. They've been on wood for a quarter of their life, but they've been idle for 60% of their life. This is like... This is like, uh, you know, the, the people you really don't want to employ. Oh, yeah, I've got some experience chopping wood, but, uh, you know, I haven't really... Nah, just... Trying to find some other things to talk about here. TC here for red. Does red know about the stone and gold in the corner? Red does. That's nice. I want to know about this guy. Not as bad as I thought, actually. So he lived a pretty long life as a wood chopper before he retired. Um, Blue's got some relics coming in, which is great for late game. This will be relic number two. Um, relic number three is actually in the corner. Something blue can't see. Relic number four is also possible here. So, you know, I, I really just feel like... I don't want to say red's on the clock here. But blue is doing a lot of really good late game things. Like walling the sides. Controlling this side with a castle. Is, that, is he escorting this monk to a relic right now? Is that what's happening here? precisely what it looks like is happening but might actually end up being an attack okay pikemen and skirmishers attacking it's always awkward when you have counter units attacking you you're like what do i do against this i mean the answer is right next to red's face here siege would be super helpful also blue and red missing blacksmith upgrade so it's kind of hard to gauge this fight a lot of it will depend on micro too uh, Monk will convert a crossbow. All right. There he goes. Converts a crossbow. But the pikeman, the crossbows, the scorpion. This will get cleaned up. Nice job here from uh, from Red. Ethiopian crossbows firing faster is really helpful in these types of fights. One sec, guys. Okay. Yeah, our base. I'm really glad that I had brought that up and that you pointed it out again uh blue continues to play towards late game here another castle down here towards the south also seems to be sending that monk over towards that relic red hasn't really been able to think long-term strategy red thought let's let's attack let's get a big old fight and you know, that's the only thing on Red's mind. So if Red could get a castle here, or even a castle here, just look at all the gold. There's gold there, and there's gold here. Red might actually be tempted to try and come back on water, uh, which is always an interesting idea. But the importance of water is, is disappearing at this point, because now you can focus primarily on producing villagers out of your town centers. I just want to say, huge fan of what you do, T90. Bought Age of Kings when it first came out and played it on my first PC. Uh, had to go on holiday after buying, but before I was allowed to play. So I took the manual with me on holiday and planned in detail. Oh, I got to see the rest of this message. What's the re rest of this message? Uh, planned in detail what army I would build in the 75 population limit. Like five champions, five skirmishers, five cataphrats, etc. Uh, your cast bring back some of that childhood joy. That's awesome. That's awesome. I actually... So I didn't play a ton back then. I just watched my older brother play. He wouldn't let me play. Um, nice stone walls here from Red. But let me show you this. Sorry, I had to step away. And uh, sorry for people on YouTube later. You're going to have to see my face. I know it's horrible. Um, but check this out. Um, sure, we'll just go to this scene. So I have, uh, this, this might be what you're referring to. It's like the, one of the original booklets that came with, it's probably going to get, um, sorry, the lighting's also horrible because I don't have the lighting on the front. Yeah, it's, it's probably not going to, uh, show if I do this because of the zoom level, but this might be what you're referring to. It has all like the civilization bonuses on it. And actually, uh, at my parents' attic, or maybe it's at my brother's house now, we found the original one where he had written the cheat codes on the back. <laughs> so, 
I have a couple of those things behind me here in my office, but... Uh, anyways, let me toss it back before I forget about it. It's the full tech tree, basically. Um, and then we also have, on the back, it says, like, unit strengths and weaknesses. Which is something that isn't in the tech tree. So it breaks down every single type of unit there. Pretty cool. Yeah, I have the same thing for Age of Empires 1 as well. Uh, we have a couple of cool things behind me in this, in my office here. Alright, so more castles. Did anyone see if Blue got the unique tech for Slavs? I, that, that's been something that I maybe should have paid attention to. I'm going to just say I hope that Blue did. Because it's more than worth it here. It makes, it replaces some of the stone cost on castles with wood for the Slavs. It's a relatively new unique tech. Yeah, there was a really thick book. Yeah, uh, and I don't... I don't think I have that, actually. If I could get my hands on that, I would definitely add it to my uh, little shelving unit. I know, so cool. It's so, like... I don't know if it's just nostalgia. Because uh, that could be part of it for us. Is Both players should be heading towards Imperial Age soon. But it, it, it sucks that there's, like, you just don't have any physical copies of anything these days, right? Like, it was so cool to just get your hands on something. But, yeah, if anyone has that and would be willing to give it up, uh, I would absolutely take that off your hands at some point. I got to get a P.O. box this year. It's one of my content goals. I haven't had a P.O. box. I think it'd be cool to see. Because people have said over the years, like, hey, like, I'd make this or that. It'd be cool to send it to you. So, you might finally get a P.O. box. All right. So, uh, Blue's actually in Imp already. I had looked at his upgrades here and missed this. So, Blue is actually getting Chemistry now, which is an Imp upgrade, and Conscription. Uh, so, the units will produce faster for Blue when that ends up happening. Red went for a massive wall over here. And again, Red will have lots of access to resources. Just hasn't mined a lot of gold this game. Like, that's been the crazy thing for me. Is actually farmed more than anything. But the gold count's incredibly low. Never a great sign as well when you also don't have relics. Like, Blue has four relics, and the fifth one is actually in the corner. Blue still can, is looking for that. Probably assumes that Red has one of them. Hmm. Murder holes, crop rotation. Guys, we've had like 50 kills in this game. Most of those kills came from that one attack that happened over here. Obviously, Blue also had fought on water at one point. And Blue's going cannon galleons! Yo, that's so sick! Red is so done. Red, red is so done. Like, we've talked about some cool things this game. But if Blue's gonna use the cannon galleons, Red will have no chance. Because I was thinking Red could build up a big force. Now that Red knows about this TC. Could build up a force there to try and attack it. It just feels like Red is really concerned about being raided. But we do have to eventually push out. We even see Elite Boyar here for Blue. Yeah, it makes sense with that water control. Cannon Galleons have tons of range too. Oh, also watch. I think Blue's going to find out where this relic is. I always forget how much vision you get with Town Patrol. Like, how many extra tiles. It might actually still miss it. But Blue just going through different technologies. Like, what can I research? What haven't I done yet? And ready. Ah! Oh, okay, still can't find it. Oops. I don't know why Capture Age does that sometimes. I think it's very possible that Red also doesn't see this gold. Like, clearly is spending the gold. There's Crossbowman on the way. Pikeman now, that doesn't cost gold. But this is a good composition for the Ethiopians. Crossbowman and Pikeman. Has made it to the Imperial Age. Will receive plus 100 food and gold. That's kind of nice. Also, is Blue getting all the Blacksmith techs? Yep, Blue's like, oh, forgot about those. Let's get a couple. Even fast fire ship now, too. 
But man, if the cannon galleons move out, you have no counter to cannon galleons. Yeah, we're we're gonna watch Red learn how to ban maps. <laughs> Red might just ban water maps next. <laughs> oh man. Imagine being this poor crossbows. Okay, here we go, boys. Only fletching in. Let's go. Well, it's kind of working, actually. Hey, Blue, you want to maybe save your ships? Okay. Run away! Run away! I'm shocked that all these crossbowmen aren't dead yet. Red is going to have to think of some counter here. It feels like Red's plan is to just fight off the ships. Oh boy, okay. Blue went with a little bit of a Boyar raid. That didn't work. Red does have 80 army. We saw a game earlier today with 1200 ELO where a player with all the late game control lost. I just heard things dying, by the way. What was that? Maybe it was something here. That castle could easily go down. Again, Red, you need blacksmith upgrades. The numbers are there. The blacksmith upgrades need to be there, too. Also, unit upgrades in the next stage hugely important. You, this is what helped me uh, early on. Okay, so anytime you advance up to the next stage, I, I think some people see the next stage as kind of like an achievement of sorts, but think, I need to gain something from that age. If I'm going there with a purpose, and oh boy... So the purpose should always be either eco upgrades or unit upgrades or unit type, you know, depending like trebuchets, for example. The crossbows are actually kind of winning, which is pretty funny. Uh, who thought that shooting a bunch of little arrows into a giant wooden ship would be just as effective as massive cannonballs flying into an army of people with low armor? Um, but yeah, so you got to think like, what do I gain out of this situation here? And the big thing you gain is upgrades. We are going to have fully upgraded bow yards for blue. Also, shout out to that barracks, which is perfectly in the cliff. 12-year-old me would really have liked that. And blue, I think, is just really keeping an eye on the sides right now. And is just realizes that there's full control. Didn't want to try and win the game with that attack is now going to focus on maybe a two-pronged attack. As we see Drazina now, uh, that won't be helpful unless there's any infantry here for blue. But Boyars are a pretty nutty unit, man. They got seven Pierce armor, but they have 11 melee armor. And 150 HP on the back of 14 base attack. But can they deal with this composition? Looks like Red's ready to push. Let's go, Red. Let's go. You can do it. If all the Boyars were here, there'd be no chance. But there's Boyars on the other side. Blue's going to defend on this side and attack on the other side, I think. Okay, here we go. We've got Arbalest attacking these Boyars. Man, look how much Blacksmith upgrades matter, though. Did any of these things take damage from the Arbalest? The Arbalests are doing one damage a hit if you haven't put it together. But there's a lot of Arbalests. They do fire fast. You've got Pikemen, so you've got some bonus damage still. And oh boy. Also, Red's getting Blacksmith upgrades. Red's probably thinking, like, I thought these things did better. Guys, we have seen crazier things before. Yes, Blue has had the position to win the game, but can Blue do it? Can Blue actually make it happen? It doesn't look like it right now. This castle will fall. This position will be lost. Panic halves are being sent out. They will die. And yo, know, here comes Blue. He's like, all right, we're losing the one side. We must wall on the left. And we must push on the right. Go, men, go. This is honestly super sick. Like, I, I hope everyone's as excited about this as I am right now. Because this is good strategy. This is just good strategy. Wall it up and push immediately. And here he comes. What a great job from Blue. And he's got to find a target for these trebuchets. And here comes Red. Red's like, yeah, let's go. We're doing it. We're doing it. And then Red will look back. And Red will be like, oh. 
Oh, that's really bad. What do I do? And, you know, had Red chose to go through here, and it is possible Red had actually clicked there, by the way. Uh, they could be pathing the other way because there's no opening there. But either way, Red's going to have to come deal with this as the Trebs are on the hill just raining down cannonballs. Can cannonballs. Raining down fiery balls onto uh, the economy. And I think we might even see a castle drop here as well. Maybe Blue sees some of that gold and wants to steal it. Uh-oh, let's see. Halva's on the way. Red might not be finished yet. How? Arbalest is a very good combination here. Hmm. Okay. This war will continue, ladies and gents. These boyars will be cleared up. Gotta love the Trebs uh, going in after the Arbalest there. Uh, I think these Trebs are going to be pretty exposed as well. Don't ask me where these blue villagers were actually going. I like how Red made a new TC there just to lose it, by the way. Um, okay. Still trying to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Blue, if you can get away with it, go for it. <laughs> He's going for the gold, man. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> he already is going to have food and wood. If he can get away with stealing some gold, even if he just gets one gold, it's super worth it. And he's not going to lose all the Trebs either. So, yeah, I mean, Red Red has just struggled to keep up with this. And guys, look at Blue. Now he's going to make buildings on the other side. There's a gate over here. So he could just run right back over to the left. This is such great strategy. Walling the sides, and then you get to decide when the fights happen, not your opponent. You dictate the pace of the game. And you dictate the order of events. And I think Red noticed this. So we have these two halves coming over. And he's like, hold on a second. This villager snitched, right? He's like, they were like, no, don't tell anyone. And he's like, okay. And then like the second he had an opportunity, he snitched. So these villagers will die, but they did bring in quite a bit of gold, right? Probably a couple hundred gold. And uh, Boyars aren't the cheapest unit ever. So certainly having that gold is going to be nice. If he used the ships, it would have been over a while ago. Um, yeah, I mean, but you can only range so much. But yeah, obviously, if he if he had the cannon galleons on the shoreline this whole time, it would have been helpful. But, you know, the thing I'll give Red a lot of credit for is was producing a lot of army. Red had like 100 army, which is really uncommon at this elo. And Blue's now going to try and even build a barracks here. Oh, that's smart too, right? Anything you can do to be annoying... Red's resources. I, I've i seen crazier things. By the way, the swordsmen are actually going to kill this. Like, if they kill the... Oh, my God. Yep. Red is going to hate life so much. Yeah, this is going to keep Red off of that gold. Imagine how difficult life is right now if you're Red. You've got cannon galleons on your buildings. You've got... Random units in the back corner that you thought you would have cleared up. And it just feels like anytime you react to your opponent in one area, there's going to be more to deal with in the next. And this is a game-ending raid if you don't realize it. Also, six hours of vital time for red. As we see blue with the champion production over on this side. Very goth-like, just waiting to see if this army can be dealt with. Uh, I think Red's now realized, and you know, the panic is real, so we see a Castle Foundation drop. Arbalest will help out there. But again, we're still missing some important upgrades from Red, and while the Castle will go up, it's still just all blue. He must be feeling like a god right now. If you have experience in this game, when you have four or five relics, I guess it's four, and you've got this type of control, it's fun, man. You just... Never really feel like you're stressed at all. Yeah, I don't know if you'll ever see a game where someone's population is so high and yet they have so little chance. But wait, 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 wait. I take that back. These are Ethiopian Arbalests. Sure, you are missing the chemistry, ballistics, bracer. 
they're still six plus two and champions are not known for being good against our and we've got rams which could clear out all these buildings and this little raid from blue will be stopped i mean th there's maybe one or two more chances here for red hmm and bracer's now coming in he's heard me guys he's heard me also, um, another thing Slabs are really good at is Cheap Siege. That's an option. We should mention, Blue doesn't have that much gold right now. But Blue's also waiting for the next attack. Isn't this sick? Blue's going to try the same thing as last time. But it's important that this group defends on the left. Oh, man. That's a big ball of Arbalest. Yeah, a couple Onager shots almost are needed here. But if you take out the Siege, then the army's just kind of gonna sit there and it's gonna stall out the attack okay the champions are taking out the siege but how many champions have to die here the answer is gonna be all of them will blue see this as an opportunity to move to the other side or not let's see i'm a little surprised red has moved back oh boy it's actually not a bad trade Yep, here he goes. This is so good, man. He's like, oh, he thinks he's got me, huh? He thinks he's got me. He defended it the first time. But I'm here again. And he sees the castle, right? So he could just take that castle out. A castle that Red placed because of all the craziness that was happening here. Red could still push here. So Blue needs to get some more army over on this side. Boyars could run in again like red I think is just just hates gold like some people are like give me all the gold give me all the wealth red maybe a man of the people likes to give away the gold I, I don't know like there's there's just a lot of free gold there guys this game is still winnable for red if he gets a sea tram push on this left side right now but he obviously needs to defend from this push that's not going to be easy I think last time what happened is red had to come home Ooh, a castle drop there. Interesting. I don't know if Red noticed this yet. Let's look at Red's units here and just see... Any sign that he's noticed this? Nope. I think he's just looking over here all the time. Also, did he lose the stone for that castle? Uh... Oh, he just has no clue. Blue is just completely surprised him oh no he's gonna place it there red when you look back home you're not gonna have much of an economy left my friend castles will be down villagers will be down houses will be gone it's this army or it's over and blue's got some champions coming out of these barracks and even though it's not the best of trades might be able to whittle down this army to a low enough size where even the champions can do it and it was a game that I, I mean, you know, some games are more predictable than others, right? But this game, it was more predictable, and but it's still a very entertaining game. And I think Blue maybe favorites Mediterranean, or just maybe has a more strategic outlook on the game. Clearly uh, new to fish, but also just knew how to use the sides. And yeah, poor Red, I'm sure has noticed now about all this. Just wants to complete this castle, and that is just simply not going to happen. The Rams are coming in. Obviously, that was... It was hoping to have the army here, build the castle, ram the buildings down, continue some type of a push. That won't work. And well done, Red. Red calls the GG. Lessons learned, I think. But uh, a fun game there as we had uh, 337 kills for blue, 213 units lost. But very well played. And, and you know, for Red, it just looked like a player who's not used to the water, not used to the sides, not used to how these games go. If the game's going to go late, though, controlling the flanks, getting things like relics, always important. 4,500 gold brought in there from blue. Um, and lesson learned, Boyars OP. I mean, honestly, I wasn't super impressed with the Boyars. Like, there were many fights where the Boyars actually were losing against Pikemen and Arbalest without fully up full upgrades. So, the Boyars didn't scream crazy to me. I... I think cost effectively, you could have just gone like champions and siege, but it's certainly freaking cool. 
And uh, the, the greatest moment in this game for me was when Red pushed one side and Blue was just waiting for it. He's just waiting. He had the whole army waiting here. And then he lost this. And the, the wall and the attack was epic. And might not have ended the game with that instance of it. But gave himself a really big lead with that. Stole some extra gold with that. Killed villagers on the gold with that. And th that's just... That's just the type of strategy you don't always see here at low elo. Like, there's a lot of stra like big strategists at low elo, but I think sometimes on the more open maps, it's hard to execute those strategies because things can be so crazy. This type of map simplifies it. You've got left side, middle, and right side. And so the strategic minds are able to, to think a little bit more about positioning and actually execute on it. Um, yeah, great game. Red did extremely well uh, considering the circumstances of this game and probably will learn a lot of lessons. But again, the main thing, go back and listen to what I said in Dark Age. Uh, in the early stages, you absolutely need to have some fishing ships to be able to compete. And um, like the, we want to see food gathering. No, not last minute. Is this just going to like prove me wrong? No, no, no. It was Feudal Age, right? Yeah, so eventually red caught up because red actually farmed a lot more than blue did for the majority of this game. But this is where the fishing ships were out, right? And so that helps you in so many other aspects of the game. Um, so it's just something that I think players should try and work into their uh, routines if they can. And if you play Mediterranean again, think about using the water a little bit more and walling the sides, securing the sides, always good.